Westwood. The American Broadcasting Company presents The Bill Thompson Show. <laughs> It's another accounting of the adventures of our man about clowning, Bill Thompson. Assisted by Sharon Douglas, Rod O'Connor, Lynn Whitney, Joe Johnson in the orchestra, and yours truly, Larry Alexander. The drugstore in Redwood, Indiana, is the scene of a gala celebration right now, for Bill's girlfriend, Jean, has been elected president of the Redwood Young Women's Self-Improvement Club. As we look in at the drugstore, we find that Gene has just broken the news to a somewhat skeptical Bill Thompson. Well, congratulations, Gene. Oh, thanks, Bill. It's now my duty to uphold the motto of our organization. Your motto? Yes. It goes, we promise to improve our minds, improve our country, improve our community, and improve our chances of getting a man. <laughs> Aren't you taking first things last? Why, certainly not. To us, the most important thing in the world is our minds. That's why we spend 90% of our time learning how to use it. Yes, learning how to use the other 10% to catch us men. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, it might interest you to know, Bill Thompson, that whenever we do talk about men, I always talk about you. <laughs> in fact, I think you're pretty wonderful. Gosh, that's nice. Oh. <laughs> But, Bill, why don't you ever hold me close and whisper sweet nothings in my ear? Oh, I'd feel so embarrassed to do anything like that. Well, Bill, you shouldn't. All young couples do it. Well... Oh, come on, Bill. Well, all right. Sweet nothings. <laughs> oh, Bill, you never do anything right. Well, gee, Jean, I try, but... Oh, never mind now. Oh, look, here comes Ted Barton. Hi, Ted, come on over. Yeah, come on over. Hello, Gene. Hi, Thompson. Hi, Barton. Pull up a booth and sit down. <laughs> I'll sit down, but if it's all right with you, I'll buy my own soda. Every time I have one on you, we crack our heads together. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Be antisocial. All right, Gene, it's your turn to sip now. Okay. <laughs> hey, wait a second. You've gone into my part. <laughs> Look, Gene, let me buy you a whole soda, one for your very own. Oh, you keep out of this, Barton. Gene likes to share sodas with me, don't you, Gene? Oh, yes. See? But someday, let's get a flavor I like, too. <laughs> sure. Just speak up after this. You'll get any kind you want, as long as it's chocolate. <laughs> Why are you such a tightwad, Thompson? I'm not a tightwad. It's a lot cozier when two people drink the same soda. Don't you think it's a lot cozier, Gene? Mm. Oh, yes. See? But do you always have to give me the short straw so I can't get at the bottom part? <laughs> That's typical of you, Thompson. Well, you wouldn't like the bottom part. Really, you wouldn't, Jean. It's all foam. I wouldn't know. <laughs> uh, say, Jean, I've been trying to find you all afternoon. Oh, what for, Ted? Well, everything's all set for next Wednesday. You mean Professor Wakefield's going to talk to my club? That's right. It's all fixed. Oh, Ted, you're a darling. What? That's wonderful. Well, he had another engagement planned for that day, but I, uh... I talked him out of it. Uh, yep. Where are you going to have that meeting, uh, Jeannie? Well, we were going to have it at my house, but now that Professor Wakefield's coming, I'm afraid there'll be such a big turnout, we won't have room for them all. Hey, Jean, when you're in trouble, come to Bill. Now, don't you worry about a thing. I've got my big 40-room house with that large ballroom that's just standing empty. You can have your meeting there. Oh, Bill, that is wonderful. I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, I do. For one thing, you discover that there's ice cream at the bottom of a soda, and not foam like he keeps telling you. <laughs> Barton, go sip your soda. Ah, go soak your head. No, uh, no, no, boys, please. Okay, Gene. Say, who is this guy, Wakefield, anyway? What's his racket? We wouldn't expect you to know. Well, uh, Bill, he's a professor of anthropology at State University. Oh, anthropology. For your information, Thompson, anthropology is the study of man from the lowest form to the highest form as we know it today. For your information, you're a fine example of the lowest form. <laughs> it so happens that I took a course in it when I went to O.G. University. You went to a school called OGU? Yeah. What's the matter with that name? It was an institution of learning offering the greatest opportunities to those students interested in the academic world. That's another way of saying they had a lousy football team. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, but you should have seen our snooker squad. <laughs> snooker squad? 
Yeah. Ball. My senior year, I was captain and played left eight ball. <laughs> Bill, you're just kidding, aren't you? Yeah, about the snooker, but I did take a course in anthropology. You did, really? Yeah, I had a great prof, too. I remember, we called him Fuzzface. Fuzzface? Yeah, Fuzzface Meyerslinger. You don't mean Dr. Hugo Meyerslinger. Yeah, yeah, old Fuzzface. Why, Bill, you call a great man a name like that? Well, you might know they would at a place called OGU. <laughs> well, he's the only, only the world's greatest living authority on anthropology, that's all. And you refer to him as Fuzzface. Mm-hmm. He always called me Fossil Head. <laughs> ah, he was a great boy. Well, just a minute, Bill. Hmm? You mean you knew him well enough that you called each other nicknames? Sure, it's a shame I didn't know you wanted a speaker. I could have got him for your club. You could? Sure, well, it's no use bothering about it now. Old Fuzzface is teaching in Europe someplace, I guess. If he were in this country, you could get him for it? Oh, as simple as stepping to the phone. Start stepping, Thompson. Hmm? Dr. Meyerslinger's on tour here in the States now. He is? <laughs> yes. And right now he's in Indianapolis, just a hundred miles away. Isn't that marvelous? Yeah, great. <laughs> well, call him, Bill. Oh, I, I would, but, but you already have Professor Wakefield. Oh, he'd be glad to cancel. Oh, yes. And think what the girls in the club will say when they hear I'm getting the great Dr. Hugo Meyerslinger. Oh, Bill, go for him right now. And I'll go tell the girls. Come on, Dad. Okay, Jean. Goodbye, Bill. You know, sometimes you act like you don't know what's going on. But when I really need you, there you are. Here I am. <laughs> oh, Bill, you've done it again. Yeah, I've done it again. <laughs> Oh, Aunt Yuffie, what will I do? Hmm, well, you've made your bed. Now toss in it. <laughs> True, I did take a class from old Fuzzface, but he didn't call me Fossil Head. In fact, he didn't even know I was alive. He couldn't. There were 300, uh, 300 of us in that class. Well, why don't you take a chance? On what? Well, call him long distance and ask him. Oh, no, Aunt Yuffie. He's too big a man to mess around with a guy like me. Well, it wouldn't hurt you to try. Anyway, Gene said he had four or five days off. You know, he just might like to see this part of the country. Say, that's an idea. And like you said, it wouldn't hurt to try. Of course not. I'll do it. I'll go call him on the telephone right now. All right, Bill. Oh, that Bill. He seems to have a knack for jumping from the frying pan into the skillet. Now, what sort of nonsense is that? Oh, probably one of the neighbor children. Well? Oh. <laughs> well, oh, so it's you. Yep, it's me, Martin Mildew. Oh. <laughs> That's rattling. I thought it was termites, but I should have known it was you. You guessed it, cutie. Instead of termites, it was mildew setting in. <laughs> What do you want? Well, I just came over to kill a little time. My daddy ordered me out of the house because it was noisy. Your daddy? Yep. Well, daddy doesn't mind so much. It's grandpa that's nervous. <laughs> he claims I'm always doing things to upset him on purpose. Oh, well, what was it this time? Oh, all I was doing was trying to saw a sheet of plate glass in two. Oh, <laughs> thought of that just makes me shiver. Ah, yes, a grand old pirate saying that. What? Shiver. Shiver me timbers. <laughs> that recalls to my mind one cruise I took with Jean Lafitte. What land's sake? Jean Lafitte goes back to 1812. I know, I was just a boy then. <laughs> we were sailing up the bay, heading for New Orleans, and we were hailed from a passing Roman galley. Back on the quarter deck, I could see Julius Caesar holding his sneezer. <laughs> Must have been something in the wind. Oh, <laughs> Just a minute. How did Julius Caesar happen to be in the Bay of New Orleans? Judy, all my life I've gone by one motto. Live and let live. Don't ask any embarrassing questions. Julius Caesar wanted to be in the Bay of New Orleans at that time. That was his business. I'm no nosy Parker. <laughs> Trouble with you is none of your stories ever make sense. Always say to heck with sense, daughter. Try to earn a few honest dollars. I mind one time I was Now, down speaking of hmm? time, don't you think you'd better go now? Well... Ain't you going to offer me a glass of milk and some cookies? No. Well, and a glass of cider and some donuts. No. A cup of tea and some crumpets. No. I'm running out of suggestions. Well, I'm not running out of nose. I'll say you're not. You've got the longest nose I've ever seen. <laughs> the 
Oh, dear. Now, for the last time, will you leave? You know, I've got a good mind. I know you have, girl, a great mind. Well, <laughs> thank you. Well, as much as I'd like to say, I've got to go. Remember what the Chinese philosopher Lin Yi once said 10,000 years ago. He said, quote, Unquote. <laughs> It means some men use a ladder to get to the top. But give me a hand, laundry. I've enjoyed talking to you. Always give me plenty of food to talk. Oh. I wish that Martin Mulder would stay away from here. He's the most confusing person I've ever met. He's got a memory like a mirror. I wonder if Bill is finished with his telephone call. Oh, Bill! I'll uh, be right there, Aunt Yuki. Well, how'd you make out? Did you get a hold of the professor? Yes, I did. And what do you think? He said he remembered me. And what's more, he said he'd catch a train right away and be here in time for the lecture. Well, my stars, for once you did do something right, didn't you, Bill? Huh. Have you ever known me to fail? Well, don't answer that. Now, all we have to do is to sit pretty until noon and then meet the professor at the railroad station. <laughs> There goes the last passenger getting off and no Dr. Meyerslinger. Oh, maybe he's taking a later train. Well, he said he'd be on the noon special. And the only other train today gets in at 6 p.m. If he gets here that late, I'm dead. Oh, Bill, what are you going to do? Oh, I guess there's nothing to do but tell Jean the truth. Come on, let's go by her house right now. <laughs> Aunt Yuffie, you wait out here. I'll only be a few minutes. Now, Bill, what if Mr. Marsh is home? Oh, if it's there, it's all very simple. I'll talk to him, but he won't answer me, that's all. Now, Bill, don't aggravate him. You know, someday he's going to hit you with those things he's always throwing. Don't worry, Aunt Yuffie. I'll be nice to him. Now, see that you are. I'll be nice to him, but I kind of hope he isn't in. He's... Oh, <laughs> uh, hi, hi, Mr. Marsh. Uh, is Jean home? Uh, she's not, huh? Well, uh, uh, could I leave her a message, please? Thanks. Hey. Well, I, I tell you, Mr. Marsh, if you'll tell Jean uh, to... Uh... Oh, are you typing something? Yeah, I <laughs> guess it is obvious that you're typing, isn't it? <clears throat> oh, say, uh, uh, when Jean comes in, would you tell her to call me before 2 o'clock? Yeah, 2 o'clock. Well, <laughs> I guess I'll be going now, but... Before I go, I, I'd like to tell you a little story I heard in Joe's barber shop. Yeah, <laughs> really very funny. You'd like it. A, a barber named Henry told it to me, and... Well, you see, the story goes, a young husband was downtown on business and remembered something he had to buy for his wife. Uh, he looked around for about an hour and finally found a drugstore, went in and asked the clerk for a case. The clerk said, uh, yes, sir, do you want it scented? And he said, no, don't bother, I'll take it with me. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute, Mr. Marsh. Now, that joke wasn't that bad. I put that down. Those portable typewriters are hard to get. Now, no, Mr. Marsh, don't throw that. No, no, Mr. Marsh, I'm going. No, thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> well, he missed me again. Someday he's going to get the range. Come on, Aunt Yuffie, let's go home. Oh, but Bill, what about the lecture? Jean's expecting you to show up at the house one hour and 45 minutes from now with Dr. Hugo Meyerslinger. Well, he'll be there. Don't worry, I'll fix that. You will? How? Well, remember that play I was in in my senior year at uh, OGU? Oh, yes, when you wore a beard and played the part of somebody's Dutch uncle. Yeah, well, I still have the beard at home, and I think I can pick up the Dutch accent. Oh, Bill, don't be ridiculous. Well, who's being ridiculous? It's the only way out. Come with me, Fraulein, and we will save the skin of your no-good nephew, Bill Thompson. Bill, you aren't serious about wearing that disguise and trying to fool Jean and her club, are you? Sure. How do I look? Well, I'm forced to admit you do look like a college professor. I do? Yes. But you're the first person I've ever seen with brunette hair and a white beard. <laughs> well, I'll powder my hair before I go downstairs. Hey, Mr. Thompson, you home? Hey, Enzo, that gives me an idea. What? 
Ring him up and introduce me as Dr. Hugo Meyerslinger. I'll see if I can fool him. Well, all right. Up here, Enzo. Okay, I'm coming to light up. Oh, this ought to be good. Yes, yeah, good and corny. Oh, uh, hello, Enzo. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, excuse me. Don't know you got a company. I thought that Mr. Bill was upstairs here. <coughs> no, no, Bill just stepped out for a minute. Oh. He said if you came by, just to sit down. Oh, You'll sure. be right back. Sure. <laughs> Oh, uh, Enzo, mm. I'd like you to meet a friend of Bill's, Professor Hugo Meyerslinger. Doctor, this is Enzo Fatadoggy. Well, hello, Professor Modeslinger. Uh. <laughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Fatadoggy. <laughs> Excuse me, please. My name is not Fatadoggy. My name is Fatadoggy. Oh. You think of my cousin, only Fatadoggy. And then there's my mother's uncle, Tony Skinny Poppy. <laughs> and on my father's side, we got a Diego Short Handsy. Oh. And that's, then there's a... That's enough. I'm sure you have a fine family. Well, I'm sure I have it too. Hey, uh, what are you professor of, eh? Anthropology. Oh, you don't got to apologize for anything. <laughs> All I want is a civilian answer to my question. I gave it to you. I'm a professor of anthropology. Anthropology? I can see you don't know much about what I'm talking about. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know something, Mr. What? Bill? You kind of talk with a limp, you know? You got a, such a strong foreign accent, sometimes it's hard for you to understand me. You talk like a man who has no education. It's <laughs> too late to apologize. You still got a bad accent. Well, it's about time for me to... No, it's about the time for me. I gotta go. Well, so long, Mr. Bill. That's a good game we've been playing. All of this to talk about you being a professor of antipasto. Enzo! <laughs> you knew it was me all along. Uh, sure, Mr. Bill. Well, I'm a suspect of something when I see you got me brown, wavy hair, and snow-white whiskers. You see, Mr. Bill, lots of old men have got a young ideas. But you're the first young man I see with an old chin. Oh. Well, so long. I'll see me later. <laughs> I better put that powder in my hair now so that my beard and hair match. As soon as I do that, I'm sure I can fool the girls. Well, you'd better go do your fooling then, because it's just one o'clock now. Oh, are they all down there? Yes, there about 30 girls in the ballroom and Ted Barton. Ted? What's he doing here? Oh, Jean probably invited him. Oh, swell. Well, here I go. Do I look all right? You look like Father Hubbard after six months in the snow, but you look... Well, goodbye, my little one. Wish me luck. Good luck, Doctor. Thank you, Jean. Have you all on time and sweet to my mama? Good afternoon, Dr. Myers. Oh, good afternoon, young lady. And who might you be? Well, my name is Susie Dieseldinker. Well, well, Miss Dieseldinker, it's a pleasure to make your training. Oh, thank you very much. You see, I'm the vice president of the Redwood Young Woman Self Improvement Club. Our president won't be here for a little while. Her name is Jean Mars. Oh, yes, I know her very well. You do? I, that means, that is, I've uh, heard quite a bit about her uh, from Willem. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, he's crazy about her. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he worships the ground she walks on. Is that a fact? Personally, I don't see what she sees in him. Is that a fact? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I always thought <clears throat> young Thompson was a clinically superior example of the highest type of the Homo sapiens species man. Yeah, that's what I think, too. A first-class jerk. But that? <laughs> but as I started to say, our president, Dean Marsh, will be a little late getting here, so I'm going to introduce you to the girl. Oh, she won't be here, eh? Well, let's stop the thing. <laughs> Follow me, Dr. Myers. I'll right through this door into the ballroom. Oh, certainly. I'm right behind you. <laughs> Oh, girls. Girls, as your vice president, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our main speaker for the afternoon. In fact, he's our only speaker for the afternoon, Dr. Hugo Meyerslinger. Thank you, thank you, Miss Diesel Dinker. Perhaps after the lecture, you and I can... <clears throat> no, that's <clears throat> something else again. <laughs> Good afternoon, young ladies. And you, you one young gentleman, you... <clears throat> Today, my subject is man. Where did he come from? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Mm, it's too bad I don't have the answer. <laughs> but perhaps we can find it. Uh, young man, I wonder if you would come up here for a minute. Me? Oh, I certainly, doctor. What do you want? Yeah. Mm, young ladies, uh, take a look at his face. 
I give you my word, I've been studying anthropology 25 years. That is the most abnormal head I've ever seen. <laughs> huh? I just noticed that your head is remarkable for its low forehead and bulging ridges over the eyes, which makes your whole appearance ape-like. In other words, a perfect example of one of our lowest human forms, a Cro-Magnon man. <clears throat> Observe the jawbone. Typical Cro-Magnon. Look at his eyes. Frightfully bloodshot. <laughs> now, just a minute, Dr. Meyer Slinger. All right. Ladies, you see this fine, brutish fellow? He reminds me of the Brontosaurus. The Brontosaurus was a large animal with a small brain. You step on its tail and it took a couple of days before it would say, ouch. <laughs> now, here's a perfect example of a Brontosaurus. I step on his foot, so... Oh! Well, he's a little faster reaction than a Brontosaurus. <laughs> now, look here, you old goat. Flattery will get you nowhere. You may be a great man in your field, Dr. Myersling, but I'm going to stand here and be insulted. Well, then sit down and be insulted. Well, that's it. I'm leaving. Never heard of such a thing in my life, that old guy talking to me like that. Well, Gene, I'm certainly glad to see you're here. Why, Ted, what's been going on? Oh, that Dr. Myerslinger goes too far with his little joke. He does? Yes, he's downright insulting. Why, that's terrible. Come on, go back in with me. Oh, nothing doing. Oh, please, Ted, I don't want to go in alone. Oh, all right, but... Oh, shh. I'll open the door. On the other hand, the other side of the person who is just the opposite of the young man who went out the door. Hmm. Oh, let's get it in the back way, Captain. Uh, this other type is noted for the firm chin, the finely chiseled features, the clear eye, the erect head, the fine specimen of manhood. <laughs> in other words, my good friend, Bill Thompson. Hmm. Well, I hope Bill doesn't hear about this. Ted, do you know who that is talking? Sure, Dr. Hugo Myers. It is not. It's Dr. William Thompson. Bill? Of course it is. Oh, so that's why the insult. Well, I'll fix him. Oh, Doctor, may I come up and ask you a question? Oh, surely, my boy, surely. Step right up here. As I pointed out before, ladies, notice the low forehead and bulging ridges over the eyes. <laughs> which makes his whole appearance ape-like. Hmm. In other words, a perfect example of one of our lowest human forms, a Cro-Magnon man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doctor, I have one question I'd like to ask you. Certainly, certainly. Let me have it. That I will. Hey, take a hand off my beard. I told you want to ask me a question. I do. The question is, does this beard come off? Oh! And the answer is yes. Well, Bill Thompson, what do you have to say for yourself? <sighs> well, my original topic was, man, where did he come from? Now, I would like to address you on the subject. Bill Thompson, where does he go from here? <laughs> Brother, am I ever fouled up with Gene? Well, no wonder. I'm not only in the doghouse, but I've been evicted for being an undesirable tenant. Well, you don't expect her to be overjoyed with what you did, do you? No, but I was trying. And I don't see why the club asked her to resign as president. It wasn't her fault. Well, it was her fault to think she could trust you to do anything right. Oh, Aunt Yuki. So I'll get it. Ah, oh, pardon me, but is this the home of Bill Thompson? Yes, it is. Well, I am Dr. Hugo Meyerslinger. Oh, oh, come in, Doctor. Well, thank you. Gee whiz. Dr. Meyerslinger, uh, you probably don't remember me, but I I'm Bill Thompson. This is my Aunt Euphemia. Of course. I remember you were sat in the third row. That's right, yeah. And you were the boy with a bright look on your face. But the dumb answer's on your paper. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry I didn't get here at 12, William. Instead of coming on the train, I drove up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I didn't inconvenience you. Oh, oh no, no. Good, not at all. good, good. When do you want me to let you to that woman's club? Well, thank, Doctor, but that was this afternoon. Oh, what a pity. Well, when is the next meeting? Perhaps I can speak to them then. Golly, would you, Doctor? Certainly, certainly, dear. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I better go call Jean right now before she gets any matter. Uh, will you excuse me for a minute, Dr. Myerslinger? Surely. I I'll just be a couple of seconds. Well, I'll just go upstairs and get your room fixed up, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, and you see, where's Bill? Oh, he's out in the hall. He's just trying to phone you, Jean. Playing another one of his tricks, I suppose. Come on. Jean. Okay, Jean. Oh, no, not again. I beg your pardon. Look, Thompson, haven't you gone far enough? Thompson, my name is Dr. Hugo Meyerslinger. Yes, we know, Bill. And if I may say so, your makeup job this time is worse than before. What? 
Uh, young lady, who are you? Oh, look, Phil, a gag's a gag, but this is carrying it too far. I assure you, young lady, I am no gag. I am Dr. Dr. Hugo, Hugo Myers. Well, I did it before. I'll do it again. Wait a minute, you. Take your hands off my beard. So you're the great Dr. Myers. Well, how do you like this? <laughs> hey, it didn't come off. You're using better glue, Thompson. Well, I can keep up with you. <laughs> oh, oh, Nazi here, you. You ruffian, you. I'll call the police. Hey, hey, what's going on here? Bill. Bill. William. Who are these hoodlums? Well, they're, they're friends of mine, I hope. Uh, Miss Marsh and Mr. Barton. Uh, Jean, uh, Ted, I'd like you to meet Dr. Hugo Myerslinger. Oh, no. I'm very sorry, Doctor. Oh, Dr. Meisling, I apologize for what I said, but I thought you were somebody else. Uh, oh, gosh, I guess you'll never lecture to my club now. On the contrary, young lady. I shall be very happy to do it for you. But you will? Oh, that's marvelous. If you do, then I won't be forced to resign as president. Oh, you can count on me. You see, I plan to stay here for another week or so, doing some research. A research? Oh, uh, really, Doctor? Uh, what on? On you, William. Huh? Me? Yes. You've changed since I last saw you years ago. I just noticed that your head is remarkable for its low forehead and dodging ridges <laughs> over the eyes, which makes your whole appearance ape-like. What? Yes, in other words, a perfect example of one of our lowest human forms, a crow... Magnum, man. Oh, no. Our hero combs the hair out of his eyes to prove that he doesn't have a low forehead. Let me remind you that Bill Thompson played himself, as well as the character of Martin Mildew. Sharon Douglas was Gene, Rod O'Connor was Ted, and Lynn Whitney was Aunt Yuffie. Also heard were Gene Gillespie and Sandy Bickhart. Music was arranged and conducted by Joe Johnson. The script was written by Bob Carroll Jr. and directed by Dick Woolen. And Enzo Fatadoggy was played by me, Larry Alexander. Oh, gosh, Bill. Wasn't Dr. Meislinger's lecture interesting? Yeah, especially that part on how prehistoric man made love. Oh, yes. Yeah. I can just see you and me 5,000 years ago. Yeah. I ride up to your house and my new brontosaurus. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. I get off, climb a few cliffs, knock on the front slab of your cave. Oh, I'd love that. Then, then when you come to the door, I'd slug you with a hammer to show you how much I cared. Oh, I'd love that, too. Yeah, then, then I'd grab you by the hair and, and drag you off to my own cave. Oh, I... No, you don't, Bill Thompson. You aren't dragging me any place by the hair. Well, why not? I just had a new permanent. Oh, great. Good night, folks. <laughs> to tune in next week at the same time over most of these ABC stations for another edition of The Bill Thompson Show. That's the ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.